Anyone remember this? Hello again everyone, it's me, Matt. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Yes, that was from the Short Circuit movie, a freaking classic movie when I was a kid, and really got me into the uh, concept of lasers, and that's what we're talking about today, laser tanks. Were they realistic? Were they a thing? And yes, they were a thing. People did make laser tanks, and particularly the Russians focused very heavily on laser tanks today. We're going to talk a little bit about them. So let's start off with in 1978, where the Russian Astrophysics Department NGO was formed, in which the general designer was taken by Nikolai Dmitriev Ustinov, the son of the Minister of Defense of the USSR, Dmitry Ustinov. It is difficult to say whether this affected the already successful development of NGOs in the field of military lasers. One way or another, already in 1982, the first self propelled laser system, the 1K11 Stiletto, was put into service with the Soviet Army. The system was designed to disable optical electronic systems for targeting enemy weapons. Its potential targets were tanks, self propelled artillery mounts and even low-flying helicopters. Having discovered the target by means of radar, Stiletto made its laser sounding trying to detect optical electrical equipment by using glare lenses. Having precisely located the electronic eye, the device hit it with the powerful laser pulses, blinding and burning out sensitive elements, photocell, photosensitive matrices, or even the retina of aiming soldiers' eyes. The horizontal laser was guided by turning of the turret. It could be used vertically or horizontally using a system that was precisely positioned by large size mirrors. The accuracy of aiming stiletto is beyond doubt. To get an idea of it, it's enough to recall that the LE-1 laser locator, which started an astrophysics MPO, was actually capable of directing 196 laser beams simultaneously into target space in a split second to knock out ballistic missiles flying at the speed of 4 to 5 kilometers a second. The development of laser weapons at Astrophysics Research and Production Association was progressing at the Stakhanov pace. And already in 1983, the Sanguine SLK was put into service. Its main difference from the Stiletto was that the combat laser was aimed at the target without the use of large mirrors. Simplification of the optical design had a positive effect on the destructive ability of weapons. But the most important improvement was the increased mobility of the laser in the vertical plane. Sanguine was intended to destroy optical electrical systems of air targets. The shot resolution system was specifically developed for complex targets, allowing the vehicles to successfully shoot at moving targets. Interestingly, during the test, the SLK Sanguine demonstrated the ability to determine and hit optical systems of helicopters at ranges of up to 10 kilometers away. At closer distances, up to 8 kilometers, the device completely incapacitated enemy sights and blinded them for quite a few minutes at maximum ranges. The laser systems were mounted on the chassis of the Schilke self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. In addition to a combat laser, a low-powered probing laser and receiver of the guidance systems was used which recorded the reflections of the probe beam from a glare object that were mounted on the tower. Three years after the Sanguine, the arsenal of the Soviet Army was replenished with the Alkvlong ship laser which was a principle of operation similar to that of the ground-based SLKs. Sea-based systems were also a major advantage over land-based. The power system of a warship could provide significantly more electrical power for pumping of a laser. So you can increase the power and the rate of fire of the gun, which would basically be perfect for anti-ship warfare. The Akavilon complex was designed to destroy the optoelectronic systems of enemy coast guard ships and naval war vessels at the time. However, one of the most interesting tanks of the time was the Zhratier or compression laser tank, the pinnacle of Soviet physicists of laser research at the time. The 1K7 Zhratier, and I'm going to try my best to say this word because it's near impossible for me to find anyone who can actually say to it to me in Russian, which was a project that entered service in 1992. In 1991, a package of lasers was immediately installed on a specifically modelled chassis and wheelhouse of the Mr. S self-propelled howitzer, which by the way I have done a video on if you want to go check out. The resulting machine was named the 1K17 Compression. There's many photographs showing that the self-propelled gun had 12 lasers, two rows of six each, and associated optics, a laser rangefinder, and a guidance system which had lenses of two sights day and night. Each laser had its own drives for aiming at the target. 
Regarding the lasers themselves, there are two versions. One, especially for compression, a dozen 30 kilogram ruby crystals were grown in a laboratory, and the others was not a ruby laser, but so called the ND YAG or solid state laser based yetium <laughs> aluminum garnet with neodymium additives. Yeah, try and say that without being tongue tied. Nevertheless, both options would cost the manufacturer a very pretty penny and require huge amounts of energy for it to fire. The Mister itself is based upon the T-72 platform and basically looks like a T-72 with a gigantic rocket pod on top. Unfortunately, no rockets inside, just lasers. To supply these lasers with electricity, compression had an additional power unit which set in motion a special generator. State tests of the machine, judging by recommendations for adoption, were very successful at the time. However, that had seemed to have ended once the USSR collapsed and it was no longer up to the squeeze of funding such a project like this. While resembling the Buratino, the salvo firing rocket and heavy flamethrower systems, the 12 barrels unfortunately did not hold rockets but instead massive lasers. This was deceiving at the time when specific levels of secrecy were placed upon Soviet projects where certain officials, and it's not wholeheartedly confirmed, believed that this wasn't a laser system but just another rocket artillery system from the Russians. Each laser had its own frequency band and internal guidance system which were impervious to enemy filter systems. The weapon comprised of a solid state laser with fluorescent energizing lights similar to that of those used on the American Zeus remote demining system. Because of its powerful generator and power plant, the chassis was mounted on the chassis of the Heavy Mister self-propelled gun and rightly so for the amount of weight that this laser system was actually carrying. The T-72 platform was a perfect capability for this thing to move quickly and around the battlefield without getting stuck. It was pretty hefty at a maximum of 48 tons. Interestingly enough, this weapon system is still completely classified. There is no true information that you can find on this weapon system. It's presumed that the Russians are trying to keep this technology for potential future characteristics of new weapons platforms. That being said, we may actually see these kind of weapons coming into the spotlight in the future. When systems like this that have been disbanded are still in the classification of top secret and not being shared, that's pretty interesting to me because it means that they're not just dropping it completely, there's still some value added in bringing these kind of weapon systems in place. Being that these are lasers and there's glass and lenses involved, each lens had its own protective cover. The top and bottom rows had protective slats that would close on the lasers if there was indirect fire or direct fire coming upon them, and the main designating beam was actually given its own independent cover. Now the system was never classified as to how well it could penetrate armor, disrupt other types of targets or electro-optical systems. It was never really designed to melt through armor that you would think it would be. It's designed to spoof or to destroy laser optics that were actually placed upon uh, battle groups of vehicles and to try and deny the ability for laser rangefinders of other vehicles. It wasn't there to melt armor, it wasn't there to shoot laser beams and burn people alive. This is what people think it is. No, 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 complete opposite. It's there to try and you know, confuse the enemy more than anything else. The characteristics of the range, its firing rate, or number of simultaneously engaged targets is completely secret. No one really knows. Its range may be presumed to be no less than the Sanguines, so about 8 to 10 kilometers, so normally twice the effective range of most modern tanks anyway. But while impressive on the drawing board, this must have been set against its laser's main disadvantage, the need for a clean line of sight in order for it to hit targets. You know, even the weather conditions can affect a way in which a laser's penetration or, you know, effect on target could be. This is a real disadvantage for this kind of system because, of course, in the Cold War and, you know, during a time where, you know, chemical weapons could even have been used that the Russians were thinking of, this wouldn't have been effective because the powder or the smoke that gets in the way of the lasers could, you know, cause problems for it. And that's really not where it wants to be. Shooting at point blank range in combat conditions is also hampered by terrain relief, rendering such systems largely impractical, i.e. you need to see straight at the target. You can't shoot over, around, or the sides like a missile. That's it. You just have to see the target. Overall, a rather interesting concept, even a little far-fetched to some. You know, it is evident by the US and Chinese activity that the use of lasers against guided missiles, helicopters, and UAV drones, where using conventional missiles is very expensive, is a strong incentive for further development, which is why I think we're going to see potentially a lot more of these kind of vehicles in the future. As I said, I don't really think it's going to be lasers penetrating through armor and melting people inside. I think this is going to be more focused upon knocking out, you know, long-range missiles, uh, potentially even knocking out, uh, you know, projectiles from artillery. If you get enough of these laser systems in place, they could actually prevent uh, you know, counter battery fire or long range bombardment from indirect. It could also be very, very effective against uh, helicopters 
observing a battle group from distance, or those using uh, you know anti-tank missiles that rely quite heavily upon guidance systems that use either lasers or radar guidance, which is something that this thing could probably cause a lot of problems for. So although a bit of a concept and something that never came to be, I can definitely tell you that something like this is probably going to come up in the future, and I can't wait to see what it will be. Maybe they'll bring this vehicle back into the spotlight, who knows, maybe there's technology that's really pushed this thing beyond its normal means, it could be something that really causes some problems to battle groups in the future. Of course its inherent design problem is the fact that it requires a ton of energy to run lasers nowadays, but times have changed, technology has changed, maybe we're going to have a Tesla tank, a Tesla laser tank that will melt through armor and destroy targets from 15-20 kilometers away and clear line of sight, who knows. But as I said, line of sight is very difficult for these vehicles, so if they can't see, that's how lasers work, they work straight lines, it's not like you're going to put a mirror 200 feet up in the sky and shoot down across over mountains, it's not going to work. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video folks, I really appreciate you stopping by. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, please hit the little bell by the subscribe button, so you can be notified of any upcoming military content in the future. If you did enjoy the video, leave me a like and I'd love to hear your comments and opinion in the comment sections below. If you want to support my channel, I would really encourage you to go check out my Patreon page and thank you so much to everyone who has been contributing towards that donation site. Really does help me out a whole lot so much right now. So thank you from a personal level on every level for you contributing towards that site. I also have my Facebook, Discord and other kinds of links in the description box below so you can feel free to go check them out. Hope you all have a wonderful day today folks. Please take care of yourself during these difficult times and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Hey, laser lips, your mama was a snowblower. <laughs>